I like to refer to the kingship of God because that's, that's a really biblical way of describing things. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well for Americans because we don't like kings very much. And so at the same time, we don't really know what a sovereign is. And I, I think that has had an impact upon American Christianity that we have such a man-centered, uh, no king over us uh, type of idea that when we read biblical descriptions of God as king, as sovereign, as ruler, as having utter freedom in his creation, we sort of struggle to have the proper parameters to, to put that in in our, in our thinking. But when you speak of the sovereignty of God, it really is the natural outworking of the fact that God is the creator of all things. If he is the maker and sustainer of all things, and there is nothing outside of him that constrains him, then he is completely free to accomplish all of his will. And the scriptures specifically say that. God does whatever he pleases in the heaven and on earth. It's, it's, it's sort of a given in scripture. Um, but even, I, I love how even pagan kings who have been struck down by God uh, because of their arrogance upon having their reason given back to them, Nebuchadnezzar specifically, uh, naturally recognize that God is sovereign. And they rhetorically ask the question, who can say to him, why have you done this? And who can stay his hand? This is, this is just simply the recognition of what the one true God is, is all about. It's a part of, of, of who he is and how he acts in his own creation. That's the sovereignty of God.